using a chemical spray on Officer Brian Sicknick. Sicknick, you may recall, died the day after the insurrection. The medical examiner concluded the insurrection was a factor in his death. The brother of Brian Sicknick told The Post he was, quote, disgusted by Trump's glorification of these accused criminals. It seems that Donald Trump is, of course, not going to stop celebrating these rioters, these people who allegedly attacked police, as long as it fires up his base on the 2024 campaign trail. Let us discuss. Anna, go. Well, um, I feel exactly the same way as Officer Sicknick's uh, brother. I think it is disgusting. But I think it's more of Trump, right? There is absolutely nothing in the story that is shocking at this point. Well, except for the f part about uh, prisoners shooting selfies of each other and then being able to send them to social media platforms, which I think is crazy. And the D.C. Correctional Department has got some explaining to do. Um, look, at the, the contrast could not be more stark. Are you uh, with somebody? You now know what you're voting for when you're voting for Donald Trump. You are voting for someone who not only promoted uh, the insurrection back then, but continues to promote that insurrection, to glorify it, to turn them into heroes, to celebrate it, to embrace it today. That's, that's the contrast, and that's the choice for Republicans, the law and order party. Whatever happened to Back the Blue? These right. guys attacked cops. Exactly. It's, it's back the blue until the blue is doing something that you don't like, like standing up for an election. You know, Anna's right. This is not necessarily surprising, but it is disturbing when you see the pull that Donald Trump still has on the Republican Party. We'll see what happens throughout the primary, but I am not comforted by the fact that so many Republicans still support him, despite the fact that he you know, supported an insurrection and it's still saying these criminals are OK people and then people are, are really upset that they're in prison. It is disgusting uh, to see them seeing justice for all. While they may sing in prison about um, justice for all, Merrick Garland and the DOJ delivered on message justice for all, justice for America, in the conviction of four of the Proud Boys for their role in January 6th. What they did is worthy of guilty convictions, and we're going to see many more of them. These are not just frat boys who are in a frat to drink. These are people that unlawfully tried to stand in the way of the peaceful transfer of power. And I think um, four words that we heard from Merrick Garland today that should uh, frighten Donald Trump more than anything, aside from the fact that these people are convicted and, and others will follow, when Merrick Garland said, my work will continue, that should worry uh, Donald Trump and any of these others who helped um, lead this call to these people. These Proud Boys and these people convicted are foot soldiers who are waiting for word for someone to storm the Capitol. And they did so with draft dodger Donald Trump saying, stand back and stand by and move on to the Capitol. Yeah. I mean, I think once it was clear that after January 6th, you would not see the Republican Party um, break from Trump, you would not see. And in fact, you've reported on this a lot, the diminishment of what happened, right? Kind of undercutting yeah. what happened. Well, now he has to find a way, essentially, to spin that, right? There's no divorcing himself from that day. And he has always told his voters that he is a proxy for them against the government. And I think this is a good example of him trying to be that proxy in the moment. Something else that's going on that's very interesting is uh, Kayleigh McEnany, the former Trump White House press secretary, uh, just announced on Twitter that she is going to be doing the the 8 p.m. hour all next week uh, that Tucker Carlson used to have. I I'm sure I don't need to remind anybody here, Kaylee was one of the biggest spreaders of election lies in that period after the election. She would go on uh, Fox all the time and just repeat these lies over and over and over. Um, so if anybody thought that the $787.5 million settlement was going to make Fox recalibrate how much they want to be associated with those lies... I guess we have our answer. Look, uh, Fox News is what it is, and it's not going to change its stripes anytime soon. I was shocked. I mean, the, the, you know, the Kaylee part is, yeah, and her lies, her spreading conspiracy theories and her lies got her a job at Fox News. But I, I, was, I was actually shocked the other day, and it takes very little, uh, it takes a lot for, shock, uh, for Fox News to shock me these days. But on the day when incredibly disturbing texts from Tucker Carlson were revealed. About, about how his, white men don't fight that way or right. something like and that. And about yeah. how he was basically at some point rooting for the death of this kid who was getting beat up by three white men. When that, you know, the, on that same day, Jesse Waters was on the air talking about how he had seen a family of illegal immigrants. And somebody said, well, how do you know they're illegal? 
He said, oh, you can tell. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So, you, you know, so I guess the difference is they're not putting it on text form that, that, will, that would get on, you know, that would be part of a trial. The cold fact is, though, they have lost ratings in his absence, like a profound dip. They're trying to stem that hemorrhaging. And the way they do that is to have someone who is very, very closely aligned with Trump. There are plenty of people who still vote for the former president, who still support the former president, without somehow claiming the unsavory parts of it. And we're watching a network essentially trying to walk that line. And, you know, they're not going to be the only one. And the truth of us is all of us here agree, as many rational people across this country do believe, that there was not widespread voter fraud. And we should have had a peaceful transfer of power. And Joe Biden is the duly elected president. Yeah. Unfortunately, Donald Trump and his base do not think that way. And uh, unfortunately, as well, Fox News will continue to push that narrative, even though we now know, based on the text that we've seen from some of their hosts, that they didn't believe it. But they know their audience wants to see that, and they're going to continue to feed what the audience wants exactly. to Exactly. It's about continuing to feed the audience to get the ratings. It's not about news. It's not about the truth. It is about the almighty dollar. And while, yes, almost a billion dollars going to Dominion is a lot of money, it's not that much money to Fox, obviously. What was your response when you saw the the... the White men don't fight that way. I think I'm quoting that correctly. What, what was uh, it was, I was disgusted. Um, I wasn't surprised that he said something like that. And I don't believe that that's the text that put Fox over. You think the there's something else? Oh, 100%. Because other people on that network say equally disgusting things like Jesse Waters. So I don't believe for a second that that was the one that put him over the edge. And listen, you know, as Maya Angelou taught us all, when somebody shows you who, you, who they are, believe them the first time. And he has been showing himself to be this on air for years now. Yeah. Um, there's also this new report in the Washington Post today saying uh, about what might, might be next for Tucker Carlson, who some people say is bigger than Fox and doesn't need Fox. Um, it says, quote, Carlson wants to moderate his own GOP candidate forum outside of the usual structures of the Republican National Committee debate system. At least one major candidate, Trump has told Carlson he's interested, according to a person familiar with the exchange. Uh, Trump has uh, threatened to boycott uh, the RNC debates. Um, what do you make of it? It's interesting when you think about Bill O'Reilly, Glenn Beck, uh, Megyn Kelly. There have been plenty of personalities that it seemed like they would go on to be bigger than the brand they left behind. That did not prove to be the case necessarily. But we are now in a media environment in which you can build an enormous following or presence and you can reach your audience directly. So this will be kind of a test of that media environment. And I think in a way, Tucker Carlson is the person to do that. I mean, he's like in his basement in Maine, but he very well could have a show that could be meaningful to people if he has the right guests. Tucker's followers will follow Tucker wherever he goes, whatever platform he uses, whether online or digital or what he uses. And look, having worked on many presidential campaigns, when you want to get your message out to the base, which is uh, Tucker's viewership, you will do a debate with Tucker Carlson, no matter what the venue, no matter where, what the and time or the place. And he can monetize it directly. Right. He the implications of this so. are enormous. Right. You know, it's right. interesting.